So the excitement levels in Oman are definitely on the rise because the Asila wind and surf season is nearly upon us. It's beginning to kick in. The wind and the swell has turned to the right direction. Uh, the wind is still around about 10 to 12 knots, but it won't be long now, a few weeks at the most, and we should have 20 to 30 knots on average every day for a good couple of months. And the mornings, usually seriously good swell. Good size, nice long rides. As you can see here, the swell is still quite small, but uh, nice and clean in the mornings. Some seriously long rides when the sets come in. Oh yeah. So the windless mornings and the lovely rolling swell makes it an ideal playground for foil drive. This weekend, my mission was to test the integrated mast with E4 position in the surf and really just try and get a feel for what are the pros and cons of surfing with the motor in E4 position. I've decided to leave the original sound on so that you can hear when I'm using the motor and when I'm not. So I apologize if you find that distracting, but I think that's really useful so that people know when I'm getting a little bit of a boost from the motor and, and uh, when I'm uh, riding without the use of the motor. Okay, so first impressions of riding with the motor literally at the bottom of the mast is how smooth the ride is. And it's not just the lack of drag from having the cable integrated in the mast. I think a lot of it is to do with the fact that the motor is so far underwater all the time that you get a much smoother uh, channel of water being pulled through the props all the time. So there's no turbulence and as such that results in a very, very noticeably smoother ride um, than when the, the props are so close to the surface of the water. Now, I know this video is about how well it performs in the surf, but I've really got to talk a little bit about how it pumps. After all, pump performance is really important in the surf if you want to pump to connect waves. For downwinding, pumping is essential to get from bump to bump sometimes. And, you know, if you want to just pump around on flat water, then how does the motor being underwater affect the pumping? Well, I was really pleasantly surprised. Yes, you can definitely tell there's a little bit more drag, but it doesn't make anywhere near the amount of difference that I thought it was going to. In actual fact, I was quite shocked at how far I could still pump and how much little extra effort I had to put into uh, pumping than with the, uh, the motor out of the water. So there is definitely a little bit more drag and you definitely have to use a little bit more effort when you're pumping but, relatively speaking, pumping isn't a problem. Let's go away from pumping for a minute and let's get back to the topic of this video, which is how does the E4 mast surf? Well, I really hope you can tell from the video, it surfs really, really nice. I mean, I was so pleasantly surprised at how good it surfs. What I've noticed about its surf performance is that although you can feel that little bit of drag, if you're just going down the line or nice gentle calves, then the performance isn't affected that much. Certainly not to the point where you're not enjoying it. It's one of those situations where you get used to it and you don't mind it. But if you are coming from using a full setup that doesn't have the motor below the water, then yeah, you're gonna notice it and it will feel a little bit draggy. But give a little bit of time. If it's your only mast, it's really a no-brainer. Even for me, coming from the motor high up on the mast out of the water, going to the E4 position, after about 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, 
I really found that it was very, very enjoyable to surf. The main time that I noticed the drag was when I was doing really sharp turns, real tight calves, um, transitioning from side to side super quick. And then you do notice the resistance from the, the motor pod underneath and it uh, gives it a bit of an awkward feel. But to be perfectly honest, if you're going to be doing that sort of high level performance surf foiling, you're not going to get the E4 mast anyway. And just because of that, I really wouldn't let it put me off using the e-foil in waves under the conditions that I've been talking about. Okay, I'm going to talk briefly about motor transitions. And by that, I mean when you start using the motor and when you stop using the motor. Because when you stop using the motor, obviously that thrust from the very bottom of the mast stops and if you don't shift your weight slightly to your back foot as you do that then you are going to get a nosedive and the opposite is true when you start using the motor when you pull that trigger you will get an instant amount of thrust from the bottom of the mast and because that mast is a very long lever it gives you a very big turning force from way down below, which is going to force the nose of the board up really, really suddenly. Now, I've got to admit, when I first started using this e-foil setup, I did not like that sort of motor transition feeling. It felt really clunky and awkward, and there was a time when I was thinking, no, this isn't for me. However, I am so glad that I persevered because, as you can probably tell, I'm absolutely loving this E4 mast. And don't get me wrong, it's not going to replace having the motor pod high on the mast for me in most surf situations. But there are some situations that are going to be absolutely ideal for it. And if it's my only option, I will not hesitate to use it. So. My annoyance was that clunky, awkward, either the nose pushing up or the nose dive situation when starting or stopping using the trigger. But it wasn't long before I began to get used to it. And in getting used to it, what I mean is anticipating the amount that I either have to lean forward and the extra front foot pressure that I have to put on my, my foot when I'm about to pull the trigger or the amount that I have to lean back and put extra pressure on my back foot when I'm about to release the trigger. That whole feeling of me not liking it because of what I've just described, I now really enjoy it. It's, it's actually a part of that foiling experience that I can make those transitions as smooth as possible. It's a whole part of the pitch control. Been this one, Oop. and been this one because back here we can get a longer ride. Here we go for the reform. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Okay, so to go from the GoPro Max 360 to being videoed on a very, very old camcorder uh, with a big optical zoom lens, so forgive the shaking and the poor quality, but at least it's a different perspective. Um, so you can see this is an afternoon session, uh, the water is no longer smooth and lovely. Um, the surf is pretty much blown out by the wind, but um, I think I'm on the 1010 here. It's, it's slow, but it's really good at being able to cope with weak, mushy rubbish that, as you can see, um, is, is what's going on here. Sometimes not much better than downwinding, but uh, I really wanted to put the e-foil through its paces. So, uh, uh, I think you can see that that's pretty
pretty much what's happening here. Far from ideal conditions, but still the e-foil mast was able to cope and I was able to have a really good session. And it's not just e-foiling back out to connect to a wave. You can pull the trigger any time you like. You don't have to wait for the board to be six inches off the water. You don't have to focus on keeping the, the board really close to the water as you're e-foiling around. You can just pull the trigger and go. It literally is foiling made ridiculously easy. And there's always going to be two sides to everything. And by making it ridiculously easy, the other side to that, the flip side, is this little bit of extra drag from the motor pod being underwater. And not quite as easy to fling about in the tightest and sharpest of, of turns. And to me, the pros hugely outweigh the cons. I mean, if it's your only mast, then it's a no-brainer anyway. Uh, but for those people who are wondering, you know, what's possible with the E4 mast? Well, I hope this video has gone some ways to, to showing you. And as you can see here, I'm pump transitioning between, uh, you can hardly call them waves, can you? you know, I mean, this one here, this, this little bump here, it's just a a very low bit of swell in fact it's it's pretty much disappeared so i'm now e-foiling around to find an, a, another one and, and lo and behold there is another one and this time it's good enough to uh, to catch and get a little bit of a glide on so can you pump with it yes can you ride waves and swell with it yes does the drag make it a little bit harder well slightly but you know can you have your cake and eat it? Well, I think this is as near as damn it, as close as you're gonna get to the best of all worlds. If you're a purist, and there's many people out there who would never entertain having any drag, anything attached to their mast underwater, then this isn't the mast for you. Um, but if you want an all round setup that can do absolutely everything, um, maybe you're at the beginner stages, maybe you're going to do more e-foiling than normal foiling. Maybe you're not bothered about that little bit of extra drag and you just want something that can do everything pretty damn well. Then yeah, this is the solution. There really is so many ways that the e foil mask can actually help you out. For example, in this choppy, messy rubbish, if the motor was high on the mast, then the board would be slapping against all the chop, the props would be coming out the whole time. Um, doesn't lead to a smooth ride. But with E4 mast, obviously any height you are on the mast, the motor is always fully underwater and it's a super smooth ride. Obviously you can pull the trigger and give yourself a bit of a boost from the motor no matter where you are. So even if you're on the wave face, even if a wave is breaking behind you and you want to just get ahead of it because you don't want to get caught in the whitewash. Uh, there's all sorts of applications for this. So, for example, when you're pumping, if you make a mistake, then just pull the trigger, get a bit more speed up, and then you can ollie up and do a bit more pumping. Or you can do no pumping whatsoever. That's the beauty of the e system. So, for me, e mast or no e mast. Well, to be perfectly honest, I will always prefer to full surf with the motor pod out of the water. However, I am now an absolute 100% convert that in certain conditions, I genuinely think that the e mast has more advantages than having the mast out of the water. It really does make certain things so much easier. You can still pump with it, you can still surf with it, still do anything you like with it, but most things are easier. And once you've dialed in the motor transitions, then oh, it's just such an enjoyable ride. So that's pretty much it from me. I think I've said all I want to in this video. I really hope it's been useful in 
getting you to know some of what the E4 Master is capable of and some of its limitations and how it compares to the motor being high up on the mast. All I really want to do now is just to say a few thank yous. Um, Paul and Ben at Full Drive, in fact the whole Full Drive crew have just been amazing. Um, continually impressed with the customer support, the level of service and obviously the, uh, the products themselves and the constant innovations they're coming up with. But I also want to say a huge thanks to the whole Full Drive community. Uh, the Full Drive owners group on Facebook, it's such a positive vibe, so many people sharing experiences, giving advice, helping people out. Um, so thanks to that guys, keep it going. It's, it's such a cool resource for, for people uh, new and experienced. Um, certainly getting a lot of inspiration from, uh, from people. Big shout out to Mike Zed and Victor Harris especially. So there we go. And on that little wipe out there, I will say goodbye.